I wait for you. Hello, everybody. We are live today. Um, so today we're gonna uh, wait, you know, for a few people to uh, log on. I know it takes Facebook a while to actually notify people. A good ten minutes, if more than anything. Um, let me see. On my Facebook. So if you are here, make sure you type something in the comments. Let us know. Tell us what state um, you're watching us from or what state you're actually in. Um, if you're a notary, let us know. Type something in the comments. Let us know that you're here. Engage today. Uh, me and Samantha, we are bringing on um, a live Q&A. Um, this this Q&A is geared towards um, attorney states, but to be honest, all questions are welcome. Um, about the notary business. Um, so we do have one question, but let me allow Samantha to introduce herself. Um, Samantha, do you want me to answer this question real quick? Because she just asked, and how do I get in contact with you? Okay. Well, I guess what we can do um, is put in the chat our contact information. Okay. So that way, um, anybody that wants to reach out can, uh, especially when the replay becomes available. Um, they can reach out that way too. Okay, I will. I'll put your stuff in there um, for you. Okay. All right. So Samantha, you can introduce yourself, tell the audience who you are and what you do. Gotcha. My name is Samantha Smith, and I am the owner of She Listens Notary and Business Services. I am located in the great state of Georgia, and um, I have been. This is my second year of my second Georgia Notary Commission. Um, at this time, I'm not only uh, conducting one-on-one um, -on -one sessions with notaries who are interested, especially in the state of Georgia, at expand their notary commission or the services they can provide with their notary commissions. Uh, I'm also participating in my own um, business with doing general notary work, um, certain types of loan signings, um, property and business inspections, and independent contract services. So I just look forward to connecting with all notaries, but especially the Georgia Notary Nation. We look forward to contacting or connecting with you all. Okay, awesome. So guys, make sure you type in your questions um, so we can answer some questions today for you. Um, I've received a lot of questions on a daily basis about the notary business, especially the attorney states. Um, between YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, I receive a lot of questions. And sometimes, guys, it is hard to reply to everybody's comment on, you know, all these different social media platforms. It just is just a lot. So this now is the time, you know, to ask questions on whatever you want to ask. You can ask, and me and Samantha. Um, between me and Samantha, we will actually answer it. So right now we don't have any questions in the comments, but we do have questions that, oh, we do have a questions in the comments. So we have Sandy uh, Sweeney, or I think that's Sweeney, I want to say. Hey, Hello. Miss Sandy, yeah. Hello, I'm in Georgia as well. Anxious to hear more on how this works in an attorney state. So I guess Sandy, you want to know from Samantha's personal experience, how is it going with the notary signing uh, business? I want to Samantha answer the question. Okay. That's no problem. Um, so as, as far as the way that I conduct business in Georgia, being it seeing that it is an, an attorney state, um, the first thing I always recommend to every single uh, Georgia notary and just notaries in general is to get a copy of your um, state handbook. In that book, it's going to tell you the laws that you can operate within in order to um, successfully um, execute your commission. However, the book doesn't tell us really how to be in business. So one of the things that I make sure that I do is um, whenever I get assignments, I always ask what type of assignment it is. Um, there are some notaries who maybe are a little nervous about asking um, the schedulers about what type of appointment it is, but that's very crucial because in our Georgia Notary Handbook and according to the Georgia State Bar, we are not supposed to be um, 
doing assignments that are of the loan closing nature um, without the assistance of an attorney, hence the name attorney state. So when you're getting an assignment, just ask the scheduler, you know, if this is a closing, will an attorney be available? And that helps to protect your commission and to make sure you're not breaking any laws. Now, it's, it's important to know your limitations. And I tell other notaries, learn your limitations, but optimize your opportunities. And so there are opportunities that we have that we can um, become successful while using our notary commissions. So for the state of Georgia, we can participate in things called um, home equity lines of credit when those types of applications come through. Um, also, we can do uh, reverse mortgages. We can also do refinance opportunities as it relates to being able to utilize our notary commission. Um, there are also opportunities that come up for um, uh, the general notary work as well. Just when you get that random call about being able to come out and notarize documentation. So there are still many ways to uh, generate an income and to be successful. Um, and it really depends on, too, what your goals are, Miss Sweeney. Um, I think Miss LaShawn put my contact information in the chat. I'd love to hear from you if you want to uh, you know, talk a little more about that as far as Georgia is concerned. Please don't hesitate to reach out and connect. All right. Awesome. So just to uh, clarify some things. Um, a lot of people want to know what is an attorney state. So an attorney state is basically a state where a lawyer that practices law in that state has to be present for their loan closings. And there is a few states that actually fall under um, the attorney state. So we have Delaware, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, Vermont, and also West Virginia um, as part of the attorney state. So Sam, we actually have a lot of questions, so I'm about to go up here in the comments and okay. feedback. So, guys, I'm trying my best. I don't want to miss nobody's questions um, because there is a lot of feed going on in here. So I'm going to go back and we have JC. Well, May said he's in the North Carolina. Um, he's in North Carolina. And yes, North Carolina is considered um, an attorney state. So we have JC. I'm from California. My question has to do with starting a notary business and business licensing LLC, et cetera. Um, for those kind of questions, you know, starting with starting with the business, getting your license, and you actually really have to go to your state um, secretary of state website to where you can find the information about, you know, what business filing to choose. Um, we necessarily can't give you that direct advice because that's like technically practicing law. Um, I know some people use legal zoom. If you do look at my channel, JC, I actually had did an interview with another attorney and she provided some really great guidance as far as, you know, what, what type of business structure to set up and stuff like that and what you need. Um, cause everybody is different and it goes by case by case, uh, basis, you know, as what business, um, entity you should actually set up. So huh, yeah. we have, okay. So JC, hopefully I was able to answer your question. So Sandra asked, no, no, Sandra, not Sandra, Miranda asked, what are the best signing services beside coast to coast? We're not going to talk about coast to coast, but uh, Samantha, you know, me, I know some good signing companies out there. Um, Timmy O's is really good. Um, notary notary dash has some good uh gives good assignments um snap docs i don't know miss uh belthrop if you've signed up with snap docs but that's a good one as well to sign up with um i said notary dash i said snap doc um also yes. try maverick yes. maverick signing services i think i think they deal mostly with uh, vehicle purchases and things like that, but Maverick is also a good uh, company to sign up with as well. Right. I mean, to be honest, there are so many sign-in services to where so like we really can't even go into all the names. But you know, there, to me, there are certain things that you should look for in a sign-in company as far as like working with them and choosing them. You know, you want to see exactly how fast do they pay you. 
Um, do they make sure that you get the documents on time? Are they taking care of the notaries? Um, you know, this it's just different factors, you know, are there what are their fees? How much they um charge, you know, charge you to do the signing. So there's different things that you just want to look for in the signing companies. Um make sure you try not to get any signing company that don't pay. Um, there are signing companies out there that are not paying notaries for the work. Um, my advice to you as with companies like that, just don't take work for them no more. If a company doesn't pay you for an assignment, you don't ever have to work with them. You can actually block them and, and keep it moving because there's plenty of work out there for you. And you, you would never have to depend on one person to get that work to you. Um, but that's all I want to say about that because I'm really passionate about um, the signing company. So Miranda asks again on field service work, what is the typical starting rate for inspection. Sam, I know you had uh, talked about that. You know more, a lot about that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love field service work. Um, there is really no typical starting rate because so many different companies use um, that inspection database and it's really based on them. Now, uh, one thing I, I will encourage all notaries is to do is to make sure your negotiation skills are on point. Um, someone can give you a rate but if you know that you expend more energy, more resources, more time to complete a certain assignment, then be willing to stand up for what you think you're worth. So just be prepared to negotiate fees. And if it's not something that um, you guys can agree on, then that just may not be the company for you. Uh, always remember, you don't have to accept every assignment that comes, especially if the compensation um, doesn't work with what you have going on. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, let me see. So I answered that one. Is there, is there a list of services that we can legally provide in Georgia from Crystal? A list of services that we can legally provide. And I'm just going to assume Crystal that you're talking about like a, a concrete list of what we can and cannot do. Um, again, for Georgia notaries and for every notary, please get a copy of your state handbook. It will tell you for Georgia, um, we cannot serve or work as loan signing agents or notary signing agents because that line of work requires um, the expertise of a legal attorney. So that is one thing that you that you know I know that we cannot do. And again, that is straight from the Georgia notary handbook. So I would encourage you to get that. Um, but there are opportunities, like I said, through um, at a, a, another recording that we can do um, the field inspection services and we can also do home equity lines of credit. We can do reverse mortgages. We can do um, refinances when it comes to um, that portion of uh, real estate. Okay, um, that's good. Um, so now we have Miranda, Miranda, again, if you get direct and done some assignments, when is it appropriate to raise your fees? Um, I would say immediately the minute that you find out that you're doing more work, that you're underpaid is when you need to raise your prices. So if you do one closing for somebody and for example, you feel like, you know, it's not enough, you need to, you know, express that to that people. Cause a lot of times people have no problem. If you're providing the great service and the quality, people have no problem with paying that. And um, as long as you are upfront and you tell them about it and you discuss them, with them about your fee, a lot of times they will raise your fee for you. So that that part is not really, um, you don't have to worry too much about that. But definitely the minute that you feel like you're underpaid, that's, that is when you tell them like, hey, um, I would like to, you know, negotiate a higher fee, you know, because you're doing, especially if you feel like you're doing a lot and you're not receiving a lot of pay for it. Uh, let me see. We have Sandy. She asks, does the attorney have to be present or just available? Quotation marks. <laughs> well, look, I always err on the side of caution and safety. So as not to uh, compromise in any way my commission. Um, I just did four 
closings recently where the attorney was available on video. They saw us, we saw them, we were able to communicate back and forth. They were there. And so for me, I would much prefer that person be there because you just don't know what could happen and you want to make sure that you have all your bases crossed. So for me, I would prefer them to be there. And I actually talk to them. I speak to them prior to the closing to ensure that they are going to be in place. Right. And the, the thing is, to be honest, um, even um, I guess some people are doing things, you know, differently. At the end of the day, I always think about it like this. Always look out for yourself. Um, always make sure that you are covering yourself because at the end of the day, if something was to ever happen, um, say if you did something, you know, wrong or whatever the case may be, that will fall back on you. So you always want to make sure you take care of yourself. And even though, you know, people want to make the money, you want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and not receiving any type of lawsuits or doing anything illegal. Um, the goal is just take care of yourself and do what, what you're supposed to do. Um, at yes. the end of the day, because we can't control what other people want to do and how things um, mm -hmm. go. So we have Sharon. She said, good morning. I'm in Georgia. Have yet to use my notary commission. How can I reach clients? You can reach clients, Sharon. First, you need marketing. You need to learn how to market, advertise your business, tell people about it, tell everybody about it that you know. Mm -hmm. um, market, market, market. That's how you can reach clients. Um just because you receive your notary commission and you sign up, you're not going to get clients. Um, because when people need a notary, no one's going to go to the Secretary of State website and look at that long list of notaries. Because on that long list of notaries, it's that's every notary that's in the state. So that's the notaries at the bank, at the schoolhouse. That's yeah. a notary that don't even really even work, you know. So you have to learn how to market yourself, you know, just using various different platforms. Um, hopefully I'll answer your question, Sharon. Miranda asks, why is a loan mod modification only $30? <laughs> it, uh, Ms. Ms. Belthrop, it just depends on who's offering the $30. I'm not sure which companies um, that you might be working with, but it really just depends on what it is that they're offering you. Right. And in my opinion, you know, don't leave the house for a $30 loan modification, even though a loan modification is not hard, it's very easy to do, you know, but you got to look at the profit, you know, and just really think about that um, before you sign up for these loan modifications for $30. Yeah, because um, remember, you can say no or you can renegotiate the fees. I've seen some of the links will allow you to say, I'm not interested because, and when you click it, it allows you to give a um a response will type in, um, would you consider a fee of, and that's where you begin your negotiations. But just because they offer $30 doesn't mean you have to take $30. Absolutely. You can always negotiate. And I feel as though, um, to be honest, if notaries were to actually really step up and really start negotiating fees and stuff like that, to be honest, um, these signing companies will probably will most likely stop with the low balls um, fees because really what happens is, is sometimes as notaries, we feel like we're not nothing. We're just taking on jobs because we want to work. But at the end of the day, you know, these signing companies need us and we provide great value. We provide great value. You know, I know a lot of notaries that will go out their way to make sure a closing is done. So if you feel like if someone's offering you some low ball, there is nothing wrong with not wanting to work with them. Um, yes. If they don't want to um, agree with you as far as like negotiating that fee, because um, there's plenty of work out there. There's there's plenty of work out there. Um, there's more than enough work, regardless of where you're located at. There is work out there for you. Um, let me go to the questions again. Man, we have so many and I want to make sure I don't miss none. Um, Miranda, I know you said that you didn't see Sam's information. I did type it in the comments, um, but you can always... You can always comment on the video and I'll make sure I get back to you. Um, so yeah. we have Michelle. She said, hi, at what point do you start your website if you have one? And at what point did you start direct marketing? I'm new, 23 signings in August. I feel like I can lean forward more. You start that website as soon as you uh, feel like you want to start it. I mean, there's no... There's not really a time frame if you're uh, really focused on promoting yourself as a mobile notary, um, whether you're using 
a, a, like a WebEx, excuse me, a Wix platform, or you're just using the Google My Business platform, go ahead and put your stuff out, you know, as soon as possible. I ask notaries all the time, how many of your family and friends know that you're a notary? And most of them say, none of them know. Well, I mean, that's your, and not that you're expecting them to get you all the business, but at some point you got to start telling people that you're a notary. So I would say as soon as possible. Right. Um, and then also too, with the, um, what, let me see, go back to our question. Um, really with the website, to be honest, you really want to get that as soon as possible. Um, and that's only because like the domain names and stuff, sometimes they get taken. So you, you really want to hop on that as soon as possible. Even if you don't necessarily start your website up right away, um, at least get the domain name um, to, so you can reserve it and have it as yours. Cause you never know, there could might be somebody else they will take your domain name um, and then you will have to find another one. So really you should start your website as soon as possible. Um, especially if you already have your business up and running, you're receiving the work. Um, the goal is to receive more work. So definitely start on the website um, as soon as possible. And what point, at what point did you start direct marketing? You can start direct marketing the minute that you feel comfortable with loan closings, um, to be honest. If you feel like you're comfortable with loan closings, you're completing your loan closings, you're not really having too many errors or not even just errors, but not, you don't, you truly understand the loan documents and you know you can do it, you can start direct marketing as soon as possible, um, to be honest. Because the thing is with direct marketing, it does take time. Um, so really because the sooner the better with direct marketing, start building the relationships, even though oh, yeah. you may not know loan closings, you know, you may not know how to even sign the deed, you know, who knows, but, you know, start building those relationships early. So that way you can, you know, get in. And once when you really feel more experienced, then you can offer your services to the, your clients. Oh yeah. Um, let me see. We have... Uh, it won't say their name right now because I think they're in the Facebook group. So greeting ladies, mm -hmm. thank you for doing this session. I'm in GA. I have been working as a signing agent for a few months now and I'm leaning toward more general notary than loan signing. Do you have any marketing slash advertising recommendation? So you are in Georgia and um like Mr. Sean has been saying, it's it's a lot of work out here that can be done, that can be uh, you know enough for everybody, enough of the pie for everybody to enjoy. So some of the the quick tips I would have for marketing is to one attach yourself to uh, local activities that are going on in your community, whether you're able to make a donation or you're able to supply the pencils or you just want to put your business card inside of swag bags or, you know, whatever they're offering. Um, that way you can get your information out. Also look in your area to see who provides notary services who may have stopped. Some of your local banks have stopped providing notary services. Some of your clerk's offices have stopped providing notary services, your probate courts, go there and make sure they have your business card. So when someone calls and they say, well, we can't do it, but we have someone that we can refer you to, you're the first one on the list. Um, one thing that I that is, I believe that has impacted my business has been um, just utilizing the tool that comes with my G Suite, and that is Google My Business. Because when someone is out in the field and they're saying, you know, where's a notary, and they Google it, I come up. And so they're able to contact me directly. So those uh, those three things, I think, have done wonders for my business. And I know that it will help no matter what community you're in to market yourself. And they're free. All right. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So Anitra, that's one of my students. Um, Anitra, me, you're going to talk. <laughs> but she said, at what point should we be contacting title companies and escrow companies for direct work? I get requests from companies, but I like something more consistent. As soon as possible, Anitra, as soon as possible. I already know Anitra is uh, one of my really good students who actually just went out there and studied the course material. I didn't even hear from her. I never, I didn't even know who she was, to be honest, at first, um, until she contacted me and she already had her business and everything like set up and she was just contacting me, you know, for help. 
um, you know, for the mentorship. So Samantha, I mean, Anitra, as soon as possible, you can start now. You can start networking as soon as possible. Um, Miranda, you said, can I pay you to do my website? If you would like for me to do it, I can. Um, just send me a message on the Facebook on the Notary Institution and I'll get to you or most likely I'll get to everyone because uh, right now the Facebook inbox is blowing up and guys, I'm on the live. Um, so I will respond back to you, everyone. Um, here is Sandy. Will Georgia sign up companies ask a notary to do a closing when it's not legal uh, slash allowed? I, I'm not going to say it, Sam. You? Um, I, will, I will say this. I've heard, I can't, you know, I'm not going to say what everybody does. I've heard um, people say, well, it's so-and-so did it. You know, I had another notary do it. And my response is always, um, if there's an attorney available, I'd like for that attorney to be present. Um, if not, this is what it says in the Georgia Notary Handbook. I mean, it's, it's not something that I'm making up. It's in the handbook. And, um, and that it just wouldn't be something I'd be able to do. Uh, I, I really encourage notaries to not be afraid to just have a conversation. You're not being combative. You're not being disruptive. But when someone calls you with an assignment that you're not clear about, they may seem rushed, but you do all the fact finding and information gathering on the front end so you can successfully do whatever it is they want you to do or be able to gracefully decline and say, well, you know, that doesn't line up with my state laws and keep it pushing. I mean, that's all you can do. Right. Um, and not only that, with Georgia not being able to do um, with the signing companies, to be honest, with general notary work, you're going to run into this a lot. Um, people asking you to do things that you're not supposed to do. Um, example, some, in some states, you know, uh, they, some people will ask you to not, uh, notarize documents when no identification or they want to sign for somebody else. And, you know, you really have, that's why it is very important for you to know your laws, um, and stand your ground. There's nothing wrong with telling someone that you cannot do it. Um, when I first started, I did have that problem. Um, I went to a school. It was like a little college or something that I went to. And, you know, they wanted me to notarize the document documents there. She, she said it as if I was just going to come there. And there was a lot of students there that needed things notarized um, with the schools, like an assignment for the school or something. So I came. And then when I came, I found out it was a um, college. She wanted me to notarize the students uh college diplomas and here in the state of texas we can notarize anything that is issued from um like a government entity or something so like marriage license we can't notarize those um a drive not a driver's license um it's i can't think of it all right now but the college transcripts is one thing that we cannot notarize um if a person wants an official copy of their transcript they actually have to order it from the school um, and that's not something that notaries can notarize. So I had a whole going back and forth with the director at the college and myself, you know, and I'm telling her, like, I can't do it. And she's like, well, the bank does it. And I was like, well, I don't I follow the laws and I don't know what the bank do. But I said, I can't do it. And I ended up leaving. Um, but I felt good about myself because, to be honest, I know I stood my ground and I was in the right um, for that assignment. So <laughs> this to add, so now we're going to answer JC. Are you able to work with some companies and for yourself at the same time? Yes. Um, the notary business is your business. Um, so if you want to work with signing companies, you can. If you want to work with title companies, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, if hopefully I did answer your question, JC. Um, I believe I did. Uh, let's go down to the rest. Uh, the question. So here's an example. Tawana Brown said so she was uh, contacted for a $30 loan modification and negotiated for $75. See, she negotiated. So you can request higher fees, guys. And the more that we kick back these assignments and start requesting, you know, for a higher fee, they will stop trying to lowball us, um, to be oh, honest. Yeah. We have to know our worth and our value. And oh, yeah. a lot of companies don't know their worth and their value. So the minute you know, we need to start studying our worth and our value so that we can negotiate for higher fees. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Cynthia. Thank you for that, Juana. Uh, Cynthia, I only print one copy. 
Okay, so Ash, uh, as Ashley. Leia, Ashley, mm-hmm. as Ashley. Oh, mm-hmm. Ashley. Oh, okay. Um, how do you market the title companies to make yourself stand out in a saturated area? Mm. You want me to answer some of that? I can answer some of it, and you can answer some of it too, because I know you. Go right ahead. Go ahead. Um, so the first thing is like any area that is. I really don't like that word, like saturated. Um, to be honest, but if you're in an area that's like where it's highly, like I will say populated. So something like, I know like a bigger city. So I know like Austin, Dallas, you know, it's, they're really big cities. To be honest, in those kind of areas, you have to find your niche in those areas. And you really mm-hmm. have to find the direct people that you want to talk to um, in those areas. Because you could be title companies, but are you going to are you going to market to the major title companies or are you going to market to the smaller title companies? Because what a lot of people don't know is that there is a lot of small title companies in the community. And a lot of times when people do think about title companies, especially in these bigger areas, um, even within my area, people think of Netco. Uh, we have First American Title, you know, but no one, everyone, people do miss these smaller title companies. And there's a lot of smaller title companies in your area. So you really want to find um, uh, a really good niche that you could pick and market to those group of people. Um, if you want to target real estate agents, if that's who you want to build your relationships with, then go ahead and build your relationships with the real estate agents. But when you're in an area that's big, you really want to narrow down and niche um, exactly who you're going to market to um, in the business. Sam, do you have uh, something to say too? I mean, the only thing I can add to that, Miss Ashley, is just make sure you up on your game. I mean, what services do you offer that are standout services? Um, mm-hmm. Are you going to include um, additional courier fees? Do you do follow up calls? Do you, you know, have some some type of technology or just some specific skill or thing that you can attach to your notary service that makes you stand out? And also, too go back and look at how many companies you're signed up with. If you're only signed up with 50, make sure you're signed up with 75. If you only signed up with 75, make sure you signed up with 150. Because like LaShawn said, there are tons out here and we hear about the bigger names, but there are smaller companies out there that have clients everywhere. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, not only is the signer your client, but that no, the, the, the title company is now your client. Do some um, one-on-one where either you're sending maybe um, an email or a text or, hey, how you doing? You know, make it about what you offer um, as a whole in addition to your notary service. Okay. Um, so we have the happy, nap- uh, the happy nappy. Um, I'm so confused about how to set my prices to post on my website. So the first thing I want to tell you about posting your prices on your website First thing is you do want to check with your state laws on how you are supposed to post your prices. And also you want to make sure what wording that you're supposed to have up there as far as with your prices. Now, yeah. everyone's different. Um, some people have that long signing prices up there and some of them don't. It just depends on your area and depends on your clientele. Um, me personally, I did not put, I will put the basic notarial fees, but as far as like travel fees and all that, you know, I didn't put that up there just because, I don't want my client to be confused about how much I charge for my services Um, because there's different factors that come into play when charging um, for services. Um, You know, it depends on how far the location, the mileage, um, exactly what you're doing for them, how many um, notarial acts you're going to notarize when you get there. So every situation, the prices is different, um, to be honest. So it's hard to just put the prices on your website because when you if you do something like that say if you say oh sixty dollars to go to this county and then when you go to that county you go to that person and but well you only told me sixty dollars but they have a whole lot going you know they have a lot going on um you'll end up having to charge more so and it will cause confusion so really make sure you um check with your state laws to see what is required what are you required to post up as far as prices um if you don't have to post your travel fees don't post them um, because you don't want any any type of confusion, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, we will go to the next question. We have Sharon. So I have a business website where I uh, where I lost. I'm just going to read it. 
I have a business website where I lost notary as, oh, where I list yeah. notary mm -hmm. <laughs> as one of my services. How can I drive traffic to my website and gain clients? Now I want to tell you, to be honest with you, as far as driving traffic to your website, this is not 1990 no more. Um, to be honest, you can have keywords, uh, CEO and everything done on your website. That Those things do help and they will help drive traffic. But to mm -hmm. be honest, um, as far as like driving traffic to the website, you have to get people to visit your website. Um, and not even just random people to visit. It has to be the right people to visit your website. So that way um, Google or Facebook and the analytics can actually start sending people there naturally and showing ads and stuff. Um, you have to make sure you market your business. So have it posted on your Facebook. Um, make sure it's a Facebook business page, not a personal page. Um, make sure you have Google. Um, your stuff is listed on Google attached with your website. Um, that is the best way to drive the clients to your website. Because to be honest, um, in 2020, just having a website and that's it is really is is not enough. Um, you need everything. You need you got to have everything, everything, every social media platform you could think of. Sign up LinkedIn, whatever, you, wherever you could post your business, post it there, and that's how you can start driving that traffic um, to your website. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, we got so Nicole said, make sure your Google page is up. Yes, um, does she was talking about with Sharon? Uh, let's see. So, I have contacted some signing some companies on signing opportunities, but starting started hearing you need experience. Are there companies giving new notaries opportunities without experience? I have studied the coursework. Allison, um, I remember, I think I remember you saying that you were in Georgia. Um, they don't know that you're new unless you tell them that you're new. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't think it necessarily says unless they have it specifically in their application. How long have you been a notary? Some signing companies have that as a part of their application process. Some don't. But if you don't tell them, then they don't know. This is where um, when a notary decides to launch out into business and they have their handbook and they've had, like you said, they've studied their coursework. This is where confidence sets in. This is where you have to just be confident in what you're able to do. One of the things I don't do is tell anyone what I can't do. That's just my personal philosophy. But what I do is offer a service that might still help someone but I'll go back and make sure I learn whatever it is that they're asking for that I, I know that I can't do. I don't go in, you know, being deceptive, but I go in explaining or highlighting my positives and not my deficiencies. So if they don't ask about the number of years that you've done something, um, take it as an opportunity to be able to learn something new um, it, it, with any assignment that you're given. Um, be patient with yourself because until you do it, it's all new no matter how many assignments you get. And to be quite honest, every assignment you should look at as a new opportunity because this is a new client. This might be a new um, season in their lives. Even if you've done a client's, um, if they sold a car, the next time you see them, they may be signing a will because someone has passed away or something like that. So, you know, you're still dealing with the same person, but two different opportunities to serve them. So, um, you know, Continue to just grind as far as putting yourself out there. Continue to sign up for as many companies as possible and continue to accept assignments as you feel comfortable so that you can get the experience. And um, if you ever need some assistance, um, I know LaShawn is going to put our contact information up at the end. Just reach out and, you know, and then holler at us. Let us know what you what you think and or what you got coming up. Sam. <laughs> You send me your link for the one on one because someone said they wanted to do a one on one with you, but I didn't have your link um, for that. No, that's I, fine. I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay. So, and then another thing, guys, about um, newbies and sounding company, to be honest, it does not matter if you're brand new. I, I'm, I promise you, it does not matter if you're brand new. As long as you're confident, you know what you're doing, you're doing the closing correctly. Um, I mean, you might have my, a minor mistake or two, but Sonic companies are still going to work with you. Um, as far as somebody turning you down because 
you're new. I, the only way they, you, they will know, like Samantha said, is if you told them that you was new. Um, and I want to go to someone has said bank serve and rock and bank serve say two years of experience, but others have got in. I'm not aware of how now, to be honest, some people, you don't really know what they put on their application. No, to be honest, some mm -hmm. people put three years. Cause to be honest, they, they don't have a way to really, I'm not even going to say that, but how can they really uh, verify that you have two years of experience? I mean, there's people who have their notary commission for 20 years. They may have had their notary commission for 20 years, but they never did a loan signing. Um, so that don't mean they know everything. So to be honest, the as far as like the experience and notaries, just because you're brand new, I promise you, you're still going to receive work. Um, yeah. In this industry, to be honest, it's all about who can do the job correctly, who can do it um, efficiently, who can get it done faster, and that's what it's about. Um, and that's the only way to to stand out as a newbie. Um, that's the only way to do it. So here we got some hope. So hopefully, Allison, we did answer your question. Um, Trisona, that's one of my students. She says she's a flight attendant. Everything is uncertain. Oh yes, Miss Williams. Oh, she's um, one of my students. I need to reach out to her. Then she's in Georgia. Um, I, I can put up my scheduling link. I can send it to you, Lashawn, and then she can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me. That would be good, Samantha. I think I think maybe me and you could do something for my Georgia students because. I feel like with my Georgia students, guys, um, y'all need really more like one-on-one -on -one direct um, with me. So, Trisona, I'm going to send you Samantha's link. And, Trisona, you can always reach out to me. I'm always – anybody can always reach out to me as a student, um, to be honest with you. Um, so, we got Andrew. He said, where and how do I sign up with title companies? Taking an NNA test today. Um, you can go on your local – well, nowadays it's Google. So you can go on Google and find different title companies in your area that you can actually market to. Um, that's how you find the signing companies. Now, another thing is with signing I mean, with the title companies, my apology. Um, some of the title companies use signing company services and some of them don't. Um, so you just have to really, you know, just find the title companies in your area that you could possibly market to or not even just market to, but really I want. I don't want to say market to because marketing to means that you're probably going to try to send them an email and trying to get the business. Really, you need to find people that you can network with, um, so mm -hmm. that you can build your business like that. Um, so hopefully, Andrew, we answered your question. Um, Ashley, she's in Austin. Oh yeah. See, uh, this is the one that asked the question about the oversaturated area, Austin. But Austin is a big city, just like um, Andrews. He's in San Antonio. That's a big city also. Um, Miranda said, do you recommend removing pricing for loan signing services? Um, I was honestly misled as a newbie on the pricing I have been accepting. I mean, you can keep it on there because I think it's only um, notary uh I want to say notary cafe where they have you you list the prices up there, but you can remove those pricing. It's not really required to have it up there. Um, to be honest, um, as far as the pricing, and we have Yolanda. How do I start my own business in notary? Um, first thing is you want to make sure that you get your notary commission. Um, invest in a notary mentor. Um, absolutely, especially if you're just beginning. Um, research everything you can about the business. Um, once, I mean, for people that just getting started, I really couldn't go step by step on everything you could do because it's so much that you have to do. Um, Ashley said, thank you. Okay. So, uh, let me see. Okay. And you have Donna. She says she needs some help. Well, Donna, what I'm going to do is I'm sending Miss LaShawn um, all of my contact information. This is for anybody. I'll send the link for uh, new notary mentoring sessions. I'll also send the link to my uh, website slash Google My Business page, just so you can see how mine is set up. And I'll also send a link to my uh, Facebook and to my Instagram, because those are my two main sources of uh, online marketing. 
feel free to reach out and connect and like the pages. And then that way, some of these individual questions that you guys have, we can do better answering them away from here when we have more time and we can devote that time directly to you. Right. Absolutely. Uh, let me see. Do we have any more? Yeah. So Yolanda, she says she'll love the information also. Um, she's Sharon says she'll be reaching out. This is a really good question. So what is the best way to find a mentor? So it depends on you. I mean, yeah. I would say if you want to answer that question. No, no, no. I'm going I'm to let you go ahead and get started. Go so it, it really depends on you. Like, to be honest, you got to find someone that you can really maybe resonate with, someone that you probably feel comfortable with a little bit, or even just uncomfortable, but definitely someone who is, who is, um, who's able to provide the information to you, um, get you the business, guide you along the way. Um, make sure that person is following the state laws and when they're telling you information, um, to be honest with you, but you have to find someone that you can actually connect with and you feel comfortable with working with, um, yeah. to be honest. My biggest thing I look for, especially someone who's at least available, you know, do they answer your emails, you know, when you reply and how soon do you get an answer, you know, when you're confused yeah. about something, you know? Um, I know me and Samantha, we have taken two different trainings, but Samantha loves her mentor. Um, he is always available to Samantha. Um, he has a group that she said he's always available. Um, so Samantha, you can probably answer the question too, if you like, you know, how, how the best way to find a mentor. Well, um, I will say this, that I do believe that uh, mentorship is a two-way street. Um, whether you are a mentee or a mentor, you are giving and receiving. So, you know, make sure you're going in with the mindset of I'm learning, but also what, what value am I adding, whether it's to the mentor or back to the notary community, you know, never go in with just the mindset. What am I going to get? What am I going to get? Um, mm. Second, I think mentorship should be organic. It shouldn't be something that's forced. Um, because that's not comfortable. And I don't believe that that is productive. And then finally, um, if you go to a person and say, hey, you know, um, I'd like for you to be my mentor, have a conversation so that person can get to know you and so that you can get to know that person. And also sometimes be prepared to make that financial investment. Some mentors charge, some do not. But whatever it is that you do, make sure you're adding value to that person while you're receiving because nine times out of ten that person has invested years to get the information that they have or they have invested money to get the information that they have and so now they're essentially giving it to you for free just don't expect to build your business and empire off of the words of a person you now have to invest the time to go back in and study and become um an expert in your craft in your state and in your community Right. And now, to be honest, it is a lot easier to find um, a mentor or someone who's teaching um, compared to like maybe, man, within two years, you know, the notary industry honestly has changed, um, to be honest, as far as like as many people uh, actually teaching on large platforms, you know, as such as, you know, like like me, what Samantha's doing um, at two years ago when this wasn't something that was happening. Um me mm -hmm. reaching out, Samantha, me and Samantha actually talking, that would never have happened two years ago on a platform like this, to be honest with you. Um, so you're going to just check out like YouTube, Instagram. Um, I know sometimes they're in the Facebook groups. Um, some people sometimes looking for mentors and stuff, but a lot of times you do have to be careful um, with finding a mentor in those groups sometimes because it is depending on the person. Because sometimes some of those people, that's not, you know, their dedication, you know. Some people don't have a love to help other people. You know, some people have a love for money and they want to profit, but you want somebody who has a love to really want to help, to genuinely want to help. Um, I know sometimes there is, you'll reach out to some notaries that's in the local area to where they are doing mentorship, but, you know, that's not really their thing. So they may not have time to really guide you um, along the process and really help you. Um, build the business. Um, to be honest, so as far as far as far as finding mentors, definitely you can check out the social media. Um, there's a lot of mentors out there. You just find the one that that fits best for you. 
Ashley asked a question, is the Notre Institution solely on Facebook? No, ma'am. I have I have a website. Um, it's, the, it's the notaryinstitution.com, Facebook, uh, Instagram. As you see, I'm here on YouTube. Um, let me see. And yeah, so I do. Yeah. So and then also another thing, I know another question that always do come up a lot is how to access um, the course material. I, the website that I have, it actually has the course on there. Um, so once when people go in and they become a student, they actually receive direct access to pre-recorded videos. So all the like live videos that you may have seen that I've done, um, you'll have access to those, um, to the classes that I do. Um, right now, we just finished up the uh, August masterclass. Um, the next one might not be to like October, to be honest with you. But yes, I am on off. I am off social media also. Um, I do have the website and I put it in the link. Uh, let me see. Someone did ask a really good question. We're going to wrap this up in a little bit. Uh, we have Veronica. Do you recommend Snap uh, Snapdocs? Yes. Yeah, Snapdocs is definitely, yes. to be honest, if you're a newbie, Snapdocs is your friend. If, and especially if you're a newbie and you really want to, you know, receive the experience, Snapdocs is your friend. Snapdocs, they don't look at a whole bunch of, um, oh, they're brand new. And, you know, to be honest, they're going to send out notifications. As long as you up there verified, you're going to receive the work. Yeah. Um, this is the best question we're going to um, answer. So does anyone have experience completing signings on Notarize? I believe she's talking about. It's um, a platform, um, the Notarize platform. I don't yeah. have any experience. I'm not even signed up with um, Notarize. Just remember when you go to sign up for certain things, um, make sure it's going to be beneficial to you. Some platforms want you to pay. And if you have the money to invest for your business, do that. But um, nine times out of 10, you don't have to pay for any sign-in platforms. You just go right. and sign up. And that's the e-notary or something, right? With the notarized? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so another thing, too, is I know a lot of people are wanting and hopping on to the e-notary, you know, thing that's going on. Because, you know, with COVID uh, happening, mm -hmm. there has been a little, well, there has been an uh, increase in, um, you know, online notarizations. But you also have to take into consideration of the expenses. And as far as like with some of the platforms, it's quite expensive to start that service, um, especially if you're not receiving the work, um, to be honest. So you want to make sure you do your research before you just start signing up um, and paying these fees. You want to make sure that you're going to receive the work. Now, there are certain things that I know that if you pay the fee, you will start receiving work. It might take a little, a month, maybe two weeks, but you will receive the work. Um, Notary Cafe is like $37 a year, but you do receive work from there. So you will receive, you will receive that money back. We have Notary Cafe, Notary Rotary, 123 Notary, um, where you, those are paid membership sites, but you do receive that work back. Um, those are the sites that I truly recommend on um, as far as paying, I've seen sometimes there is a scam email that comes out. Um, if anyone ever receives any type of email stating, hey, I have work for you, but you have to pay, you have to invest in my training. Um, no, that is most likely a scam. Um, if anybody tell you that you have to purchase their training to get loan closings, you might as well keep it moving, um, to be honest with you. Um, this this really going to be the last question now. <laughs> I'm curious in general, how's business during the pandemic? We need more notaries. That's that's how business is going. We need more notaries. Mm -hmm. We need more. Notaries. And I don't know. I don't know if Miss uh, Kirsten is asking us individually. Um, I just know I I have a full time job, and so most of my appointments are scheduled once I get off and on the weekends. And I know for the last two weeks straight, um, and you know even prior to that, but for the solid last two weeks straight, I've been notarizing two appointments each evening, and I try to stack them up a little deeper on the weekend. So it hasn't slowed down. Um, COVID has, um, with all the interest rates and stuff plummeting and all that, people are really out here refinancing their homes. 
which for Georgia being a um, an attorney state, we can do those. And I've done I've done about four of those in the last two weeks, um, all in the same week. So, um, I mean, business has, has been good and and people are doing a lot um, with their personal their personal affairs, getting wills in order power of attorneys in order and those documents need um those documents need notarizing so you know and with with Georgia I can only I can only talk about Georgia Georgia is still requiring wet signatures Georgia is a state that has not done uh remote online notarizations outside of certain um certain real estate documents um, so people still got to meet face to face to get their stuff notarized. Um, people are starting businesses. Some of the, some documents need notarization. So business is still good. Right. And I, I know I think, um, man, is that Kirsten, I want to say, but another thing, I think what it is too, a lot of people um, are thinking that coronavirus is slowing down things and people are not getting notarized. Um, people are not getting documents notarized. To be honest, that's very um, false because you really have to look at it um, from a certain perspective, even with general notary work. To be honest, general notary work is like I know it's booming because this phone rings about three or four times a day, if not more, you know, just for general notary work calls. And a lot of times um, right now, what's going on is businesses are closed and they're not allowing, you know, people in there. So, for example, the UPS store notarize your loan documents, right? They're only allowing five people in there at a time. And then on top of that, the notary um, here and, and where in my Pacific area, they only have the notary on certain days and on certain hours. So that so that means that a person now needs to know need to find a notary. Uh, sometimes some of the banks are still closed on the inside because of COVID. You can't even go inside. Um, you mm -hmm. have to go through the drive through. But people need their documents notarized. So now people are looking for other uh, resources to get things notarized so covid to be honest has not slowed down the notary business at all um to be honest with you it's definitely a lot a lot more busy there's a lot more business it's even it to be honest is really to me it's it seemed like it's really getting bad um even with some of the title companies like they're reaching out to notaries now trying to find notaries for closings um to be honest with you um because the signing company is probably not able to find them all so to be honest, the business is not slowing down because of COVID. Um, there's just different precautions. Those things are being done a bit differently, but as far as it being slowed down, that's not, um, that's not happening at all, um, to be honest with you. The coronavirus did not stop the loan closings, you know, at all. Uh, we have, you know, I had an attorney call wanted to do a loan closing, but asking me, did the notary have COVID because the client had COVID and she was talking about if the person already had COVID, they can't get it again. Or I don't know, it was something she was saying, but trust me, they are desperate out here for notaries. Um, when someone called me about that, I know their business is definitely um, booming. So we have Sabrina. We have a lot of questions, Sam. Um, is anyone else having a problem finding a laser printer? Everyone's having a problem um, finding a laser jet printer, Sabrina. And I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, Kirsten, I will start going live again more. I know, <laughs> but uh, Sabrina, yes, everyone is having a hard time with the laser jet printers. Um, to be honest, there is a shortage uh, going on. Um, I know that with the brothers, there's a shortage. But my advice to you, as in finding a printer, you have to really be on it every single day. Um, check Best Buy, check Office Max, check Staples. You may got to drive out a little further to find it, yeah. um, to find the printer. But there is a little small slight issue going on with the printers right now, but they are available. Um, you just have to really be grinding to find the printer now. Um, like before, you can just go and purchase it. But now you really do have to be grinding hard to try to find a printer, um, Sabrina. And let me see. Uh, someone's talking about Ron. Oh, notarize. Okay. And then Katie Goodman, do you use an app or service like to get? Oh, okay. So he asked me, do I use Thumbtack? You know what Thumbtack is, Samantha, right? I do. Mm -hmm. I, I, personally I personally don't use it. 
I don't use, I never used it. I think I used it one time, but I didn't like it. So to be honest, as far as like general notary work, your best bet is really getting on Google um, and having your website set up for general notary work. Because the thing is with general notary work, you're trying, you want to be within the community for general notary work. And that is, that's how you get general notary work is to be within the community. Um, if your community is not really on Thumbtack, there's no point of being on there, to be honest. So you want to go where your community is at. Um, KD, hopefully it answers your question. So that is actually all the questions we have, guys. Everyone, thank you for attending our live. Thank you for engaging with us. Um, to be honest, it means a lot to us and other notaries um, at, um, when you ask questions and we're able to answer them and provide you know, really good information. So Samantha, do you have anything um, you would like to end this with? Uh, the only thing I want to say is, uh, you know, you all are taking really big steps and you should be congratulated for that. Whether it's you're starting a business or you are venturing out into the new industry that is um, that is the notary industry, you should be commended on that. Um, it's never easy. It's not going to be easy because it's a learning process. Um, just remember that with like with anything. Um, nothing is guaranteed in any business. First and foremost, you have got to know what's going on in your state, your laws. And then you have to, like LaShawn said earlier, invest in the training. And then finally, you got to have a confidence to get out there and put it to work. Have your mentor, have your good support team. But at the end of the day, it is you. But you, you got it. You can definitely do it. Um, LaShawn's going to put up all of our information to contact us um, after this particular session and just, you know, reach out because we are essentially still a notary community and um, we should be here to support one another. Of course. Well, guys, thank you, Sam. Um, I, I put Sam's contact information in the uh, chat this now. Um, I was able to copy and paste it. So Sam information is in there. If you would like to book one on one, um, if you would like to speak with me, you can always um, catch me at the notary institution dot com. Facebook, the notary institution. I reply to the messages. They come to my phone just like a text message. Or you can email me at the notary institution at gmail.com. But the social media platforms are definitely the best platforms to reach out um, to me if you want like a response right away. Um, but that is all I have for today. And thank you, everyone. And we'll see y'all again next month. Next month. Bye. See y'all later.